pregnancy should be a time of joy and not anxiety for the woman and her family. Do you want to learn more about pregnancy or have questions about fertility and reproductive health? Then join Dr. Linda Vano to on Facebook and YouTube every Saturday at 4 p.m. on the online pregnancy school as she discusses pregnancy, delivery and child care with Esper. Hi everyone. Once again, it is time to come your way with the online pregnancy school. I hope you are doing well and I also hope you have been learning a lot because there's a lot that we have covered. So please, if you have just joined us in today's session, I would want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell so that anytime we have a program coming up, you will be informed and you will join us. And also remember to like our page and give us some comments. Or if you have any questions, put them in the comment section and we will come back and answer them and also acknowledge the comments. And as I always say, please share. Let people know that we are talking about pregnancy, delivery and child care. And what we're trying to do is to help reduce those preventable maternal and newborn deaths and help families to live healthy and fulfilled lives. I'm sure you'll do that. My name is Dr. Linda Vanutu and it is always a pleasure to come your way with another interesting and educative session on the pregnancy school. A lot of people have reached out to us with comments and with questions, but there's one question that keeps coming up. So today I decided to look at that particular question and help to address it. We may not finish all today, but in future sessions, we'll take part of that particular aspect and also talk about them. So what am I going to talk about today? I'm talking about planning or preparing for pregnancy. A lot of people have asked, how do I prepare? How do I plan for pregnancy? Because there are so many people who get married and they look forward to becoming pregnant. But you see that as the months go by, no pregnancy comes and they become worried that am I doing the right thing? Is there something that I can do? Is there something that I shouldn't have done? So today we want to take a look at preparing or planning for pregnancy. And I'm going to do this under various topics. And I'll start with even when the girl is an adolescent. So even before she gets married, is there something that she has to do? Yes, there is something she has to do. One of the things she has to do is to stay healthy. Staying healthy entails a number of things. One of them is to know how to eat. You know, there are a lot of people who, because they think they are putting on too much weight or because they are picky in terms of the food that they eat, they don't eat certain types of food or they tend to eat a particular kind of food. And this food may or may not be healthy. So it's important that as a young child, a young girl, the parents encourage this girl to eat well because you are eating to prepare for the future. So they have to eat well. And eating well means that you eat a balanced diet. A balanced diet is diet that contains carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and oils, and the other things, fruits and vegetables, that will help you to get what the body needs to grow well. And it's also encouraged that within that period, young ladies are given folic acid. I know that in some countries, this is part of what they do for the adolescent girl. So they give them the folic acid. They also check to make sure that they are not anemic. Because during the adolescent period, when these girls start menstruating, some of them have challenges. So you find that if they don't eat well, they become anemic. So through a system, they find a way of ensuring that they don't stay anemic even into pregnancy. But unfortunately, in some instances, these things happen. So you find that a girl gets into the adult stage, gets married and enters pregnancy with a very low HB, hemoglobin level. 
and that affects the pregnancy. So it's encouraged that while they are adolescents, they eat well and stay well. Now, another thing they can do is to make sure that they are not too thin or too big. Because for some of them, because they don't want to put on weight, they tend not to eat so well. And therefore, they don't have their body as they should. So you find that somebody is of a certain age, but if you take the weight, the weight is too small or too low for that particular age. That is also not good. So it's important that they stay healthy. Now, another thing that we encourage the young girls to do is to make sure that during their menstrual cycle or the period, they stay hygienic. So you cannot use one pad for the whole day. If you do that, you can introduce infection because blood is a very good medium for growing bacteria and other things that can give you infection. So we encourage that they don't use one pad from morning till evening, which means that as parents, as caregivers, you should be concerned about our young ladies. So if a young lady is having her menses, please provide the pad for her or whatever she will use to ensure that she can change the pad. When she's going to school or she's going somewhere that she's going to stay away for a long time, let her carry another pad. So that somewhere along the line, maybe after four hours, depending on how much she bleeds, she can change the pad before she comes home. Some people bleed a lot and therefore they will need to change their pads more frequently. But don't wear one pad the whole day saying that I'm conserving the pad that I have. Please, that is not good enough. The other thing we will encourage the young girls to do is to stay away from sexually transmitted infections. That means that do not please be sleeping around with boys and men. Because if you get a sexually transmitted infection, it will affect your future productivity. So please stay away from that. And also stay away from becoming pregnant and going for termination of pregnancy, doing another one, doing another one. Because as you do that, you'll be affecting the chances of you having future pregnancies. I know you will do that, right? And then if you're a young lady or if you're a mother, a father, you know that your daughter has a medical condition and she's supposed to go to the hospital, please make sure that she goes to the hospital for that particular treatment to be given as prescribed by the doctor. So please do that. Now, if you're a young man, you are not exempted from this. You're also supposed to take care of yourself when you are young. And that means that do not also be smoking and drinking and getting engaged in use of drugs and doing other things that can harm you. Because if you do that, it will affect the quality of the sperms that you produce and therefore your chances of making your wife pregnant in the future. And if you have a sexually transmitted disease, even though it may be uncomfortable for you, we encourage you to go to the hospital for the proper treatment to be given. Whether you are a boy or a girl, please go to the hospital for the treat proper treatment to be given so that you are not affected in the future. And also the young boys, we encourage you to stay healthy by eating well, exercising as much as you can. Do not overdo it, but do it within your strength so that whether you are a boy or you are a girl, you stay healthy during that period it is important now having spoken about the adolescent we go on to somebody who is planning to get married and the counsel is that start planning for your children before you get married maybe you have decided to get married in six months or a year's time or whatever the time is do not wait till you have been married before you decide that now what do I have to check? Please don't do it that way. So what can you do when you are married? Okay, when you are married, it is also important that you stay healthy. It is very important that you stay healthy. And you also have to set your own goals for yourself. That what am I going to do to help me to have babies? So now you are married, what do you have to do? As I said, even before you get married, 
So from the adolescent, you go to the stage where you know that you are going to get married. What do you have to do? Start at least six months before the marriage. You know you are going to get married in December. So you start around June or you are going to get married in June. Start preparing before that time. Start preparing. And what does this mean? It means that you also have to maintain a good health. And a good health means eating nutritious, balanced diet. Don't say that because I'm going to get married in six months, I'm going to be skipping food so that I can be slim for my wedding. No. You may be harming yourself because you need to eat well. Eat well balanced diet. So if you want to lose some weight because you think you have to, then please do not just skip any food at all. Talk to a dietitian. Talk to the public health team. Go to the hospital. Go to where they do the weighing and the rest and talk to them and let them help you because there's a way of checking your weight against your height and then checking other things. So please do not on your own say that I'm going to get married in six months or three months or whatever. So I'm going to skip food so that I'll be calm thinner. No, please don't do it that way. And then you also have to have good night sleep. Maybe as you are preparing, you think that this is the time I have to be staying awake, thinking about this, thinking about that. No, please. Plan your time in such a way that you will have enough good night's sleep. It's important because it keeps the body healthy. So have enough good night's sleep. And that means that do not sleep for two hours or three hours or four hours during the night. No. Have enough good night's sleep. And also be drinking water regularly. Some people leave the house in the morning when they drank water. Till they come back in the evening, they will not drink any water. No, we sweat, we urinate, we speak, so we lose water. So please make sure that you drink water regularly to stay healthy. It is important. We are preparing for babies as we go into marriage. So it's important. And then it's also important that you do a little bit of exercise what you can do walking is enough so you can be walking just take some walks try to walk and as you do that you also have to keep a very healthy mental state and that one you can do by not thinking about what hasn't gone well not thinking about who has wronged you not thinking about what you do not have but be grateful for what you have and then if you find that you are unduly sad you are concerned about something. You are anxious about something. Please do not stay with it. Take a trip to the hospital. Make sure that you seek care. You see, mental health doesn't mean that you are weak. It doesn't mean that you are not a woman. It doesn't mean that you are not a man. It shows that you are concerned about your health. So if you find that you are very sad or there are things that you cannot get out of your mind, please do not stay at home. And for those of us who are Christians, for those of us who believe in whatever we believe in, it is good that at this time we focus on God. So try to build your spiritual life. Build your spiritual life at this time when you are preparing to be pregnant. It is important that the body stays healthy and complete and full. It's important. So please do that. And again, if you know that you want to lose some weight, do not on your own try to skip this food or that food. I'm not eating this. I'm not eating that. Please make sure you get to the hospital. You ask for the proper counsel. Ask what you can eat, in what proportions. That will help you. Now, the other thing I would want to talk about is even during this time, you may be aware that you have a certain medical condition. Unfortunately, some people have entered into marriage without doing anything about that. That should not be encouraged. So within this time that you are preparing before your marriage, if you know you have any medical condition, whether you are a man or a woman, this is the time to seek medical care. 
ask about how this can be managed going forward. If you have diabetes, if you have hypertension, if you have any other chronic disease that you know of, even if you don't know of any, you can still go for medical screening so that everything will be checked for you during this time as you prepare to get married. Remember, we are talking about the time before you get married. And I'm saying that it could be about six months. Take about six months to do this before you get married. And if you have ever had any surgery done, if you have ever had any surgery done around your pelvic area, do not hide it. Talk to the doctor. Maybe that doctor is not the one who saw you at that time. But if you go to the hospital, do not hide any past medical history. And again, if you know that you have ever had a sexually transmitted infection, when you go to the hospital, tell the doctor. Now, this happened to me about so many years ago. I had treatment, but I have to let you know. It is important. So if you have ever had it, please let it be known that this is it. Again, as we prepare to get married, I'm talking about before marriage. As we prepare to do this, whether you are a man or a woman, please try and stay away from use of illicit drugs. Even if it is medication that is sold over the counter, do not on your own be taking medicines just like that. It is not advisable. If it's been prescribed for you, it will be given to you for a period. If after that period there's anything wrong, or you feel the same way, go back to the hospital, go back to whoever prescribed it for you and talk to the person about it. It's important. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the online pregnancy school. Today, we are talking about a question that we have received from many people, and it's about how to prepare or plan for a pregnancy. So that's what we are talking about now. If you have not yet subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that bell. So anytime we have a program coming up, you will be informed. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and also like our page. On Facebook, follow me on the Pregnancy School. And remember to invite people, share with friends, share with family. Let's all join as we help to reduce preventable maternal and newborn deaths. So we'll continue with our discussion on preparing for a pregnancy. And we are talking about before you get married. So now, if you are a woman and you used to drink, please, as you think about getting pregnant when you get married, stop drinking. Stop smoking. It is important. These things affect you. And if you continue in pregnancy, we have already spoken about it, it will affect the outcome of your pregnancy. So please do not do that. Now, again, during this period, if you are a young lady, you will be put on folic acid. Folic acid is very important in pregnancy because it helps to prevent a certain defect in the baby. So it is given to young women as they prepare to be pregnant. So that is important. And when you go to the hospital, it will be given to you. They will tell you how much to take and for how long you can take it. And even when you are pregnant, you are given folic acid so that it helps to prepare you for a good pregnancy outcome. So it's important that we have these steps. As I said from the beginning, set a goal for yourself. And I'll come to that. So we are preparing for the pregnancy as we get married. The other thing we have to note is that we have to feel good about ourselves. Yes, feel good about yourself because even the Bible tells us, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So feel good about yourself. Do not look down on yourself because your mental state is very important as you prepare to get pregnant in your marriage. It is important how you see yourself. So feel good about yourself and make sure that you like the state that you are in. 
do not be anxious if you are anxious if you feel sad whatever the problem is please do not stay at home make sure that you go to the hospital and talk to the doctors or the nurses or whoever you meet who can see you talk to that person and we have the mental health units within the hospitals so if they find that you need to see a psychologist you will be sent to see the psychologist and that is to help you to put everything together so that you do not enter into marriage with a poor state of mind so please feel good about yourself stand in the mirror just smile to yourself and say you are fearfully and wonderfully made tell yourself good things and just feel good about yourself okay sure so now we are moving on so in marriage now we are married so how do we prepare to get pregnant now that we have entered into the marriage and i hope that as we talk about these things you are taking notes and you will do them so we have a good pregnancy now one of the key things that we want the young women to note the menstrual period it is important it's important 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 that you note your menstrual period the first day of your menstrual period is the day you saw the blood the first day you see the blood that's the first day so what you can do is to note that date if it is first of january just note that first of january is when i saw blood also take note of the number of days that it flowed then you also take note of the regularity how how often does it come so you take note of the date you can mark it on the calendar you can look at the quantity you look at the number of days that it lasted one day two days three days then it lasted and when it came was it in drops or it came like a tap that is turned on or it was okay so please note these things it's important note them the first day you saw blood again when you have noted the first date on your calendar the day you saw the blood the next time you see blood again you note that one and you can do this for about three months six months so as you plan before you get married you can also be planning for that maybe you have not been noting your period days and all that you can be noting them so you can use that as part of the things you do even before you get married so note that the date you saw the blood the next date you saw the blood the next date you saw the blood that will help to calculate the cycle because averagely people have between 28 to 30 days so if it starts today within 28 the 28th day they will see blood again or the 30th day they see it some people have it shorter than that some people 20 21 others have long ones 40 days and over now it's important because this is what will be used to calculate what we call the fertile period and please it's also what we use to check the ovulation when possibly the egg is released because the egg the process of getting it together you know starts earlier but the date that it is released is usually 14 days before the next period 14 days before the next one so it's important that's why it's important to mark the date you saw the blood and the date you saw the next one the date you saw the next one so that it can be used to calculate the cycle for you and also be used to calculate the possible fertile period for you it's important and as we do this it's also important that we maintain a good healthy environment so do your messes please like i said earlier with adolescents 
do not use just one part the whole day again even when you are not in your period some people after the period they think that there is some dirt that is inside their private part so they need to put their fingers there and try to scoop everything out please that is not advised it is not advisable to do that you can be infected you can introduce infection which can travel up into the fallopian tubes and that will be a problem for you so during your menses please stay as healthy as hygienic as possible remember to be washing your hands also frequently is that okay so we are talking about planning or preparing for a pregnancy and it is important now some people as part of the question say that um when i went since i got married two months or three months i haven't become pregnant but to make a diagnosis that somebody is not capable of becoming pregnant it's not just one month after marriage no in some cases they use about six months or even one year where the couple together they are staying together they are having unprotected sex for six to six months to one year and for some people the frequency is so low that even if the woman is fertile the chances of having a pregnancy are minimized because of the times that they meet so you find that if you are preparing for pregnancy you should be staying with your husband or if you are staying somewhere and the husband is also staying somewhere then with the menstrual cycle that we have spoken about it will help to calculate your possible fertile period so that at that time you can meet and that will increase the chances of you becoming pregnant i hope you get that so it is important keep track of your periods and don't just say that i've been married for one month and i'm not pregnant please for women for men it is not just one month some people become pregnant easily others it takes a while and maybe in the future we'll talk more about that but in previous sessions we have spoken about infertility in the man and in the woman but we'll take aspects of it and discuss them into detail in the in future discussions so it's important to understand this that it is not just one month and it should not be maybe one time in a week or once in a month and you say that you want to be pregnant no that is not how it works and then also you have to identify any challenges it may be that before you got married you did not know that you had any medical condition but when you got married you found out that i think there's something wrong with me please go to the hospital get a screening done and then if you are put on treatment try and follow the treatment so that we have a better chance of getting pregnant also learn about your family history it's important to learn about the family history do you have any history of maybe some of your aunties or even your own mother or your sister somebody within the family who did not have a child or who had a child who unfortunately died very young or she became pregnant and she lost the pregnancy or anything to do with family history please when you go to the hospital also share that with the doctor and if you have any disease that runs in the family maybe you know about sickle cell you know about other conditions that are there in the family share that with the with the doctor and for your own self as a woman if you have any issues let's say you have your periods you you find that the blood is coming a lot a lot of it is coming out or you are having big big clots or you're having this very severe pain or anything that doesn't seem right when you go to the hospital share that with the doctor i hope you get that yes so today ladies and gentlemen we are looking at planning or preparing for pregnancy and i started 
by talking about the adolescent, the need for that person to stay healthy and stay away from things that will affect the health generally. Smoking, drinking, other things. Sexually transmitted infections and things like that. Then we looked at six months before you become pregnant. What do you do? And I've given you all the things that you need to do. And now that you are in the marriage, what do you have to do? So for the woman, you are aware that you have to keep track of your menstrual period dates. It's very important, the dates. But that is what will help you. And if you're a man, you also have to stay healthy. Stay healthy so that you produce good sperms that can fertilize the woman's egg. We will come back in future sessions to talk about specifically the man. Some of the things that can happen to prevent a pregnancy. And some of the other questions where people talk about the fact that after sex, they see that everything comes out. We'll see whether that is how it should be or not. So I want to leave you with this. If you are a woman, you are preparing to be married, please have your own checklist. Write the things that we have spoken about, how you maintain your health, how you look out for things that are not, so to speak, um, were not there before. Look out for them. Anything that is a bother to you. But then plan to take some walks, plan to be healthy, Plan not to, on your own, lose weight without any proper advice from a trained person. Do all those things. Write them down. Check them. So you see whether you are following your own plan. And make sure that you go to the hospital for screening as well. So if there's any disease, if there's anything hiding anywhere, it will be found out and they will treat you. Today we'll end it here. Once again, if you have not yet subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you will not miss any program that we bring your way. And remember to like us and also give us a thumbs up. And follow me on Facebook, The Pregnancy School. If you have any questions on what we have discussed today, please send me a WhatsApp message on plus two three three. Five nine two four two zero six two five plus two three three five nine two four two zero six two five. My name is Dr. Linda Van Lutu, and it is always a pleasure coming your way with the online pregnancy school. See you in my next video. Bye.